XYZ. My learning has been XYZ. And hold on to the greatness and work on repairing the yes. things that I believe I contributed negatively to the situation. Right. So this is now, it's pushing us out of our comfort zones because now we have to put our big girl panties on. <laughs> Correct. And you gotta Correct. go, right. I can't be immature about this. I got to look at it from all perspectives and see what, like you say, I love that. What is the good that you got out of it? Because there's always, you know, a positive and a negative to any situation. But the thing that propels us to the next step of our understanding or experience of that thing is looking at what did we gain out of it that can help us to move better um, and, and exist, you know, in a more positive space love this i want us to go to these values because these are difficult things to have a conversation about in the beginning so for example someone might be saying you know i'm applying for this job and it's not really because i've even looked at um you know what this company stands for i'm just chasing the i'm just chasing the paycheck you know mm -hmm. i want the money i need to look after my family etc how do we engage in our day-to-day -day lives not separating our values from every conversation or every decision that we make or every move that we make because i need to be value aligned with my friends i need to be value aligned in work i need to be value aligned with an intimate partner relationship you you, you otherwise like you say it's it's gonna go like this and then you realize no these pieces don't exactly fit quite right how do we have mm -hmm. the courage to interrogate what our values are and to seek it as an expectation of those that are around us? Well, the info that I could share there, for the longest time, I didn't even know what my own values were. Because right. you're so busy doing life that you don't even know who you are. So many of us are chasing things, you know, one thing after the other, just for survival, that you don't even know what your values are. Yeah. So you have to invest in yourself you have to take time for self if you don't love you how do we expect somebody else to love you? so i would suggest look inside of you take the time every day and we all call it different things your gut the Holy Spirit, your sixth sense, that feeling on the inside, you know when yes. something feels wrong. Yeah. You know when you connect with somebody. You know when you're there, but you don't really want to be there. You yeah. know when you're doing something and it just feels out of sorts. That means something is wrong. So if you got to really step back, understand what are the real things in my life? Have a plan. What are the things that resonate with me? So when you're out there, you know that you're chasing or you're working towards aligning yourself where the values are aligned. Right. And that happens across the board. There's two things I want to ask. Oh, my gosh. And I want to ask them at the same time, but I can't. I'm going to jump on there and uh, a, a public specialist one is saying, you know, they, they're taking note of the quote where you said, you're so busy doing life that you don't even know what your values are. I'm so glad you guys are finding value in this. Please pop your questions uh, or your comments as we go. This is not about Medina and I, it's about you getting what you would like out of this conversation so that you walk away feeling empowered, encouraged, reignited, uh, challenged at all in your life so that you can find some value in what we're trying to do with you or for you here today um one of the things that you know comes with being in or able to interrogate your values you have to kind of own the good and the bad things about oh, you really? now it's difficult to accept to <laughs> to even speak out and to even say to somebody else you know medina i suck at this thing or this is the mistake that i've made in my life um because the relationships of trust are also difficult ones to establish. How do we, at least with self, uh, yeah. uh, empower ourselves to have an honest conversation to say, yes, these are the good things about me, but actually these are also the bad things about me. I need to start to move in, 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 in growing in those areas in my life or accepting that about myself. 
Well, for me, it comes down to, I had to look within me. And yeah. like I say, it took the longest time. I would look at somebody else. People would do things that were on the wrong side of me. I would get absolutely irate or irritated by what somebody else was doing. Yeah. Only to find the nugget that I was exactly the same. That's wow. why there was an irritation. So it's almost like a reflection. You know, the negative things about me, when I saw it in someone else, it stirred something within me. Right. And that was the big thing that helped me realize what were things about me that I needed to fix. Yeah. Because often you don't even know it. You're just being. Again, I go back to you just doing life. You don't know that these things are offensive. And yeah. you start losing people along the way. But when you lose people along the way, we go back to how do you look within to say, what is it about me? Now, it's not easy owning those things up. But once you start doing life and losing things along the way, that is what opens up the mind to actually step back and analyze the situation. Yeah. So you can start picking up what your faults are yeah. and owning it. There's a, but there's a certain level of consciousness, surely, that you have to have if you are someone who looks at your life and, and dissects it and looks at how can I improve, what do I need to let go of, etc. Most of us, let's be honest, we're in denial. I think I'm right. I want everything that I believe to be the way everyone else must do things. And I'm going to say, no, Medina doesn't understand. Medina is the one who needs to change, etc. How, how do we own the fact that sometimes you, the problem is you you are the problem sometimes <laughs> well there's one thing for sure we've got no control over changing anybody else yeah so if you don't like a situation look within yourself i have no power over anybody but myself so consciousness is it's something that you need to want often people go through life and they're absolutely unconscious. Yeah. Now, you've got no control over that. So it comes back to how much of a better life do I want for myself? You're right. How much right. am I going to invest in me so I can become a better version of me? Yeah. And that's the only way you can do it, dear. And sometimes there's people that go throughout life absolutely unconscious. But that's a choice. That's quite a scary thing to realize, eh? Because yes. when you have this amount of access to information, there really is no excuse for us not to be growing, or at least in the areas that we've identified to be important for ourselves. If I'm, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her surname correctly, it's Amanda Kaza or Chaza. Um, she's asking, how do you maintain a positive attitude in the workplace when you spend so much of your time there? Well, firstly, the workplace that you're in needs to be a space where the values are aligned and where you love to be. Yeah. Because anything that you love, it makes life lighter. You don't even see time. I mean, it's like when we converse. We never, ever see the time because we're doing what we love to do. So I would say definitely have a goal plan, yeah. especially in the workplace. Align yourself with the right people. And always be giving off of your best. We're really here to serve. Yeah. And the more you give, the more you get. So make sure if 80% of your life is being spent in a certain space, it needs to be a space that you love to be in. Right, right. And I often find, or at least in my personal experience, sometimes the enemy will want to attack us in the space where our purpose lies. So if you're passionate about radio, if you're passionate about accounting, if you're passionate about speaking to women, if you're passionate, whatever your passion is, that's often the space that the enemy wants to attack. He wants yeah. you to be frustrated. He wants you to yeah. hate waking up and going to work. He wants you to deal with colleagues that are frustrating. He wants you to, you know, like 
be distracted by all these moving things that you actually forget why you're there in the first place, what you are committing to do or that it's your area of ministry or purpose, etc. So I love that, that we need to kind of, you know, dial it back a bit, focus on the goals, find coping mechanisms because that's something that you've also taught me. So when you know it's getting frustrating, do I go for a walk? Do I go for a run? Do I read a book? Do I draw? Do I dance? Do I go for a drink with Medina? Do I book a one-on-one session with my counselor? Whatever it is that is yeah. your space that you refine your center, that's what you kind of have to rely on when things get a little bit challenging. So Uno Nishavs is saying that she found it so powerful, the thought that she said, you've got no control over anybody else but yourself. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. you guys are finding value. Thank you for all your comments. I'm seeing them as they go up here. If you have any questions, please bring them through. I want to ask them to Med so that you can walk away from today's conversation saying, well, that's the nugget that I needed to get and that's the thing I'm going to focus on going forward into this new week in my life. All right, let's go back. Because a lot of how we are or who we are is informed by where we've been, where we come from, and what we have survived or are going through or have been through. Trauma. Trauma, as wide of a topic as that is, speak to us around your thoughts on how trauma can hold us back from moving forward. I think that trauma really is paralyzes you like fear. So you're so afraid of dealing with that feeling that you experienced when you went through something traumatic that you hold on to it for the rest of your life. Right. And it comes back to understanding it, accepting it, feeling the pain. You have to feel pain. You can't keep covering pain. Because if you keep covering it, you'll eventually trip up. Yeah. So I can only share from my experience of the traumatic experiences that I've gone through. I've had to own them. And so many of them I just locked away. Yeah. And I built yeah. these walls around me. And well, they were really pressed it in the back of your mind. Yeah. Mm. Because you're protecting yourself. You're so afraid. So you protect yourself and you build these high walls. You don't share your truth. You don't open up with anybody. And like I said earlier, you just start digging the hole deeper and deeper. Whereas when you know better, that's the only time you can do better. So it's sharing your truth and unpacking that trauma. So yes, you always need to protect yourself. I'm not saying you shouldn't protect yourself to a certain, you know, phase or space, yeah. but you need to let go. Yeah. Letting go is one of the hardest things because yeah. we don't know how to let go. We're yeah. afraid of what we don't know. We lack the trust. You shared, uh, asked the question earlier. We need to increase the faith and stamp out the fear. Yeah. And that's the only way we can get through trauma. Trauma requires counseling. And it depends on the depth of the trauma. Yes. So yes. some phases of trauma, conversations like what we're having is great. Yes. Others need constant engagement. Yeah. Others need counseling, you know, as in deep professional counseling. Yeah. Because it absolutely. is so deep rooted, and that's why there are people that are qualified to hold your hand. Yeah, But you need to ask for it. I love what you're saying because a lot of the time the belief is that if you believe in God and you're a Christian, you must only pray and you will be helped out of the situation. But these things go hand in hand. And yes, of course, the praying is important. The direct conversation and communication with God is important. But there's also the additional resource of a qualified person professional who can assist you to have coping mechanisms or structure them or even to help you vocalize what it is that you are um, surviving or have survived as an ordeal Um, and I know that often we speak about if you've been through the thing the worst is already over because you're still standing and you've survived it etc but then it's almost how, what, what does life look like after? How do you create right. it in a healthy and a positive and a sustainable way in a way that is not further destructive to you, but that allows you to release that trauma and to perhaps use it in a way that empowers you? And for me, 
I have found that in doing the steps that you're speaking of now, because, you know, I don't know if it's a black community thing, that if you go to a therapist that something is wrong with you, I will own it. I go to a therapist. I've been going to a therapist. But in that journey, I've realized that I can now speak about the gender-based violence mm-hmm. I, 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 I survived as a child. Mm-hmm. And I find that me being able to speak about it is unlocking similar journeys in other people. It's helping mm-hmm. them identify what that trauma is, putting a name to it, finding uh, a solution to it, starting to say, I'm not going to let it be this nightmare or this ghost that goes past me every day and every night. And it, 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 it triggers me and, and I become debilitated or debilitated. What's the English word? I don't know, whatever the word is. <laughs> but finding empowerment from it. And so thank you for sharing that because I think mm-hmm. these thoughts must go hand in hand. The faith is one element, but the practical help is a second element to it as well. Um, Zamokosh is asking, how do you develop or build courage? Because it is this fancy word and we know it's amazing when you've got it. But if you're coming from a place of either rock bottom or brokenness or this trauma that we're speaking about, how do you build the courage that it requires to take even the very first steps to, to, to rebuilding your life? Yeah, courage is a big thing, especially if you have self-doubt, if you don't believe in yourself, if you lack self-love, because you're always questioning what other people think. And I think that's where it starts, is knowing that you are love. Every one of us has a uniqueness. Every one of us are valuable. So it's understanding how worthy you actually are. And sometimes even to understand that is hard if you come from a space where... Of brokenness. Of brokenness. So I've always... The only way I found it, and that's the reference I use, is I found that firstly in the church. I found that in the church, and I must say it was also my relationship with my mom. Because my mom was somebody that I could always go to. And it was somebody that always encouraged me and shared with me how amazing I was. Even though I found it hard to believe. I didn't believe I was amazing. But the encouragement was absolutely on point. So I would say try to align yourself with somebody that you know has your back. Yeah, that's the first thing, whether it's a mother, a sister, a grandmother, a best friend. And sometimes that is very, very hard to find. So you may even find that you're going to have to look for an elder or somebody in the church that can stand with you. But we need encouragement all the time because we're human beings. So as much as we say we can pray, we can look up, but if we're broken on the inside, we need somebody standing that can keep on encouraging. I find affirmations are also very good. I look at myself in the mirror and I tell myself how amazing I am. But again, I go to the good book and it says there, I mean, God loves us beyond. So if there's no one else to go to, there is Christ who never forsakes me. So I look in that mirror and I tell myself on a daily basis how amazing I am to keep on feeling encouraged. So you're speaking about a space that borders on um, a support system. And there's someone listening right now who says, but I don't have a mom figure. I don't have my parental structure that can kind of hold me up. I don't actually know who I can turn to. So if I don't have those people around me or that kind of support system in place that affirms the love that I know I'm worthy or apparently people say I deserve and am worth, how do I find the spaces that actually can cultivate that sense of knowingness that I am worthy, that love is for me too. Someone is coming from a broken home. They've never even known who their biological parents were. Someone Mm -hmm. has been moving from foster home to foster home. Someone has been moved from aunt to uncle to grandmother to whatever. So they don't have that grounding or that stability that allows them to find that positive self-identity. Uh, You know, what do you want to say to someone like that who's listening right now? Well, my first thing would be is if you look at the access to the social media like we have right now and we're online, there are so many pastors, there are so many groups. I would tap into what is your faith? 
and grow the faith because that is enough to encourage you. You yeah. shared earlier praise and worship. When you're listening to the word, it puts you in the right frame to understand that you are loved. So yeah. thereafter, if I need the physical connection, I will go to my local church. I will connect. When you are feeling broken, what I do is give more of me. In the serving, the more I give, because there are people that are more broken than me. Sure. So when you give, you tend to feel uplifted. It's in the giving that makes you feel whole. So I move away that. from this big I love that it's almost a change in perspective and sometimes that's all we need is to press yeah. the re reset button or the refresh button or the pause button look at it from a distance and that kind of helps you to navigate the space in a different way that is extremely powerful thank you for that yeah. Matt. Um there's a question coming through here saying what if you need to make a decision and this decision you know will result in your happiness but it will make unhappiness for everybody else around you that is something 90% of us find ourselves in that yeah. same situation but that's because we're so afraid to hurt other people just like you said the question saying everybody else is going to be hurt but if you're not whole how are you going to be beneficial to all these people that you care about right right you absolutely right. you will get yourself deeper and deeper into unhappiness because you're not sharing your truth so you'd rather share the truth and let everybody eventually overcome the anger because that will set you free and you need to be the best version of you that's where it all starts so else you know good to these people that you care about yeah. but i also believe the way you do it is what's important if you do it with love and you do it from a very good place because the intention is certainly not to hurt them yes things will eventually work out for the good of all right i love that you've clarified that because i think sometimes we need to be reminded that there is a difference between putting yourself first so that you can pour out more to all the responsibilities that are yours and being selfish being selfish yeah. would be not considering anyone just making a decision that you haven't kind of thought through in detail that and there's a, there is a difference and i think that's something yeah. that we need to be reminded of that there absolutely is a difference all right i love that i want to speak around boundaries boundaries are Jonga, it's a big topic that we all need to consider <laughs> because we we encounter it at some point whether it's a friendship circle whether it is you know uh, 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 in your parents engagement whether it's with your partner whatever it may be because the more we growing like you say we've got access now to all these resources so let's say someone is on this conversation today and they've heard something and they go oh this speaks to my life and they make a decision that is going to change how they have done things before it means they need to tell the people around them that in fact that way i used to do things doesn't work for me anymore i'm now wanting to do things like this which means you are putting new boundaries in place often when you put new boundaries in place it's met with resistance because sometimes people like being able to push you over and you know bully you and do whatever it is that impacts your decisions but now that you're putting in these boundaries in place how do we enforce them how do we respect them how do we have the people around us start to respect those boundaries as well well i think it comes back to the previous question it's the way it's done right. so firstly you acknowledge that you need to put these boundaries in place so you can acknowledge it 